Dude, how high are you right now? Me? About 5'10". Man, you've smoked yourself past the point of no return. Well, I have to keep using THC because my brain's kind of overloaded. I have a really big tolerance and those receptors don't come back. Wait, your cannabis receptors won't come back once you've lost them? Is that valid? Or is it highly dubious? No! My lie! My lie! Hello once again, everyone. Today's paper comes to us from the Journal of Biological Psychiatry, Cognitive Neuroscience, and Neuroimaging. Doctors Deepox, Cortez Briones, and Raghunathan look to answer that age-old question. If you use cannabis chronically and you burn out your receptors, and then you stop, will your receptors come back? How soon will they come back? And to what extent will they come back? I don't know the answer, but it's provocative. Gets the people going! So just a little bit of background. The receptors that we have in our bodies that accommodate THC and CBD are our CB1 and CB2 receptors. These are located in various parts of our brain and our body and lead to the effects that we associate with using cannabis. While our brain is loaded with them, they are more prevalent in different parts. And for the purposes of this study, we're going to focus mainly on THC and its association with CB1. Now, the receptors in our body can undergo a process called down-regulation. Let me build a scenario here for you. Let's say someone puts large amounts of THC into their system. Ooh, go on. This can throw our body and our brain out of balance. So how does our body compensate? The receptors for THC will start to eliminate themselves. So the THC we put in our bodies will have a reduced effect. But the creatures of habit that we are, what we tend to do is just use more to have the same effect with fewer receptors. This can cause problems such as overuse, but also withdrawal. Putting a substance into our system and having less receptors, what happens when you remove the substance is the opposite effect. Oh, I love coffee. Finding it, getting lost in it. When I drink coffee, I get energetic, I get clear-headed, and I get happy. Take it away, the opposite happens. I am tired, sluggish, hazy, and irritable. Someone who is using cannabis chronically and is experiencing large amounts of downregulation of those receptors should have the withdrawal symptoms of cannabis and more severely than somebody who has used cannabis less or not at all. When someone uses cannabis chronically and then stops, the opposite happens as well. Hungry, happy, sleepy turn to no appetite, irritable, and difficulty relaxing. And this should be exacerbated if somebody has gone through large amounts of downregulation for those THC receptors. So if you downregulate your receptors, you need to use more to have the same effect. Some people call this tolerance. And with more downregulation comes increased withdrawal when you stop using it. Good? Let's move on. So this study looked to show the changes in cannabis users' brains when they stop using cannabis at a molecular level over time. This study took 30 men with an average age of 26 and it divided them up into two groups. Those who used cannabis, which were classified as cannabis dependent, and those who had never touched cannabis before, who were classified as punchable nerds. But in the study, they called them healthy controls. Okay, so the legal team says I'm not allowed to call them punchable nerds, but they are punchable, aren't they? And who's the doctor? The cannabis dependent group was classified as people who used 30 or more joints in the last 30 days, or had used cannabis in 21 days out of the last 30, or 120 or more days use in the last six months, or two years of consistent cannabis use, etc., etc., etc. And to this study's credit, they did not include anyone who had excessive alcohol use, medical issues, psychiatric issues, or smoked tobacco. This is very important because nicotinic receptors and nicotine can actually interact with CB1 receptors. Most studies in the past that tried to look at this did not take this into account, and it may have skewed their data. And not to knock the other studies, but most didn't look at the changes over time, just all at once. And many of them made the error of looking at incredibly heavy users. How heavy? Well, that's people at an average of 10 joints a week. 10 joints a day. For more than 10 years. Yay. So this study is way more considerate of the general population and looks at things over time. They were able to look into the brains of the cannabis dependents and the healthy controls using 11-carbon OMAR. This is a chemical used for PET imaging that attaches to those CB1 receptors that we can see and visualize with technology. This is elegant because it gives us a complex, colorful, high-res image of the brain, very similar to the topography images we get of the Earth's surface. I don't know if that means anything to you, but I wouldn't favor the non-smokers here. Cannabis users have the higher ground. For the methods of this study, they scanned everyone's brain right away, two days post-pot, and then four weeks post-pot. 
What did they find? They found that there was a 15% decrease in the CB1 receptors for those cannabis-dependent individuals. And this is in most areas of the brain, save the cerebellum and the thalamus. So using cannabis does get rid of those CB1 receptors, is a fact. And they also confirm that the absence of these receptors leads to increased withdrawal symptoms. That's not good. So you can lose up to 15% of your receptors and have increased withdrawal with even minimal use. Oh, but there's a bright side. Like I said, the withdrawal peaked within two days, but within two days of stopping cannabis, the receptors started to bounce back. You could make up that 15%. Why isn't this on the headline news? Can't smoke self off cliff. I like that headline, print it. Well, sorry folks, there are some limitations to this study. While I gave the study kudos for looking at the receptors over time, it is limited by four weeks. Also, it's limited by the size and the scope of the study. They only had 30 people. Could age be a factor in the receptors? All of the subjects were young and within a very specific age range. So would your receptors bounce back the same way if you were 18 or 80? And we're not addressing that they were all men. Would the sex of the subjects play into the results and how much? And one final thing, even though the people who use cannabis had an improvement in their CB1 receptors after two days, they never quite reached the level of someone who never touched cannabis at all. That's a little bit disappointing. So let's summarize. Cannabis receptors are downregulated even with modest use. Downregulation also has a negative relationship to withdrawal. The more you downregulate, the worse your withdrawal will be. But the withdrawal tends to peak after two days. And after two days, we see a restoration of many of those CB1 receptors. But the downside is, even if you start getting those receptors back, you'll never have the receptor density of somebody who's never touched cannabis in the first place. At least they didn't find that because the study was limited to four weeks. So it seems like you can't smoke yourself beyond repair, but could your brain ever be normal? Well, according to this study, that is highly dubious. Thank you everyone so much for watching. This particular paper is going to be down in the description. Pass this along to someone who you think could get a buzz off of it. Subscribe for more discussions. And as always, we'll see you soon.